First thing comes to your mind, very quick, get to know your audience, how to get to know Dr. William Lee. The uh, favorite song to sing? You know, I, I, <laughs> I, I have been listening to different um, covers of John Lennon's Imagine in the last Ooh. couple of years. Nobody is going to argue with that. That's an, an amazing song. And, 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 you and know, everyone that does it, it's amazing. And, and you know what it is? It's sort of like, you, you, that's a song you can't screw up. Almost anybody can sing that and make it meaningful. Yeah, and play it too. It's a, and, it is a, it's like an amazing song, easy but beautiful to play. How about favorite core pursuit in life? Core pursuit on our show is basically hobbies on steroids. Yeah, you know, um, I love to explore food. Not surprisingly, mm. from what I do, and so when I travel. Uh, as I'm sure many retirees get the chance to do uh, on their own terms. Uh, you know, when I get to a town, I, the first thing I do is I head to, if they have a farmer's market or a village market, it's the first thing I do. Oh, that is cool. I can totally envision that. Yeah. I, I head right to the market. Um, you know, when back in the day before they had uh, your camera on a phone, I'd just take my camera with me. And, you know, what's interesting before I've had my first meal in a, in a new place, if I can get to a village market or a town market, um, I, would, I, I will literally just wander through, find things that interest me that seem to be to call out the character of the place. And I, and I actually kind of anchor my first impressions of a place by the foods that I see. Uh, so cool. Okay. I see you doing a show, Parts Unknown, with Dr. William Lee. <laughs> Uh, favorite instrument either to play or to listen to piano. I've been playing piano since I was four. Uh, that, okay, cool. And I'm sure you can play imagine. It's pretty, it's, it's beautiful, right? Uh, favorite of your, either your own books or your, uh, for your favorite book in general. You know, I, one of my all time favorite books is a novel fiction novel, uh, by a, um, secretive author who passed away his name is trevanian hmm. and uh i loved uh the uh book shibumi uh, shibumi it's an awesome book you should check it out uh the author um uh was a he, he only went by a pseudonym was actually named rodney whittaker and he was a film professor and he wrote his novels as if they were movie scripts and so it's oh, very cool. cinematic storytelling. Uh, that's very cool. All right. Favorite athlete or favorite sport? Uh, you know, I grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, so I'm always a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. Favorite place you've traveled in Michigan? I've only been to Detroit once. And okay. it was <laughs> it's not your favorite place. <laughs> and it was the, and it was literally maybe it's not favorite, most memorable. And I'll tell you why I always remember Detroit, because I was in a hotel at the moment that they declared the pandemic. Oh, OK. So it's just a couple of years ago. That is yeah. OK. So not a great, not fond. I always ask Michigan people why, because it's a kind of an underrated state. And that's why I always say Michigan. I did, before that, though, I did go to a nice restaurant there. It was a great place to eat. <laughs> How about internationally or the world? What's your favorite place? All time favorite uh Kind of like uh, go to places, uh, a little village uh, on, on the northwest coast of the island of Santorini, Greece. The village is named Ia, O I A. Been there 35 times. That is truly a favorite place. People yeah. struggle with this one. It's like, ah, like, yeah, I've been there. But that's truly your favorite place. I um, nailed it. Yeah, that is cool. All right. Well, that, so that's going to come back up because I have a feeling that's going to play into our story today. Uh, as we go through our own cinematic script here for with uh, Dr. William Lee, tell me about. Uh, so, so we're talking about your your work um, around the human body and health, and what should we know about keeping our body healthy a as we age? I mean, we're all individuals, and we, when it comes to food, not only is our metabolism all unique our gut bacteria all unique. But I think food is something that's incredible because um, it's one of the most intimate things in our lives, right? I mean, after we were we came out of our mom's wombs, got spanked, 
took our first breath, the first thing, the first experience we had was actually having a mouthful of food, mother's yeah. milk. Okay. Yeah. And, and every one of us, no matter who you are and what you you know, how disciplined you are and what your background is, whatever your circumstances, everyone has some memory of a food, a smell of some food, something that their mom cooked that they loved. It brings them right back to childhood. And our food tells us something about where we came from, uh, our families, our backgrounds, our communities, our culture. And we all come from some culture, you know? I mean, there's always something we track back to. And even historically, the generations, our generation, individual generations passed, passed down genetics, passed down gut bacteria, passed down cultural traditions that shape our individual preferences as well as biology. And so something that, you know, I really love, um, you might not cotton to something you just resonate with that might be healthy. I might not, um, uh, I might not fancy as well, but that's okay. Because, you know, what I write about in my book, Eat to Beat Disease, there's more than 200 different foods I've identified that activate one or more of your body's health defenses. So it's not like it's going to be hard to find something that's there's good. There's plenty, for you. right? There's plenty on the shelf. There's plenty in the farmer's market, to your point. Exactly. It's, you know, I mean, and I would say the thing that people need to understand is the healthy food is all, eating healthy is actually leaning into your own preferences the foods that you actually enjoy that are good for you, and then leaning into the abundance of what Mother Nature actually provides us. Don't eat more, but eat more of different types of foods. Explore. Um, our bodies love variety. So don't get into that kind of like, I'm only going to eat white foods kind of mode. Okay? Mm -hmm. Get out there. And, you know, especially I think if people are retiring, what an opportunity to take that moment those moments to really begin to study the world around you when it comes to food that's what i'm telling you when i get into a new town i go right into the market uh, one of the before the pandemic one of the uh, last international trips i took i was asked to give a keynote at in in munich and i'd never been there before landed checked in threw my bags in my hotel and then i i i, I headed right to the town um market and literally just stood in the middle of this thing, trying to figure out, okay, what do they eat here? What's in season here? Um, what can I find here that I wouldn't find in my own town? And then, and I made, and I made notes and I took pictures of all these things, you know, um, dare to be adventurous when it comes to food, yeah. even visually. Do you, by the way, do you have a, I should have asked you your favorite food. Do you, can you give me a, a favorite food or, or three? Oh man, I could give you a lot of different favorite foods. Um, you know, I mean, I always drink tea. I love tea, yeah, and I also yeah. drink coffee. I spent some time living in Italy, and I got into the coffee habit. Um, went to medical school, so I had to drink my share of uh, of coffee to stay awake. <laughs> um, but uh, foods that I really enjoy. I mean, you know, it actually changes by season. But the, some of the things I'm I'm enjoying right now, um, uh, I am, uh, and people might. Think this is odd um i'm really getting into um tinned fish okay? oh cool so like uh what would be give me an example of a t uh, fish that um, you would tin sardines yeah uh, packed in oil with a little bit of piquillo pepper okay uh or actually the, uh and and another one i had is tin tuna in or uh, olive oil and oregano the other day why am I interested in that? Well, number one, yeah. it's... Um, By the way, that's about the last thing I would have thought you would say. <laughs> what is your very favorite food? Fish wrapped up in, in, in a metal. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, look, you didn't say, what you know, what's my favorite Michelin star meal I've ever had? <laughs> that's true. But, but I'll tell you what I'm, what I'm thinking about these days. I'm trying to figure out, and, and this pandemic shaped this a lot. Like, I was trying to figure out, you know, in the early in the pandemic, we all had to eat. And so everybody ran out to get stuff back for their pantry and their in their homes. And so I wound up you know, figuring out like, okay, omega-3 fatty acids, marine omega-3 fatty acids are found in smaller fish lower in the food chain. And mm -hmm. you can find that uh, pre-packed in tin for you. And yeah, you know, when I was growing up, I always thought that like canned tuna was like cat food. Yeah. Right. Um, and maybe it was cat food. 
but the, the <laughs> but by the but, way, I love canned tuna. By the one of the, I have a very fond memory. I used to live in Spain for a little while, and we always yes. got canned tuna. Yes, and it, and I have a, a fond memory of that yes. with, with the oil, and it was just it was wonderful. And yeah, and I'm just telling you, Spain, Portugal, south of France, Italy, Greece, they do canned tin fish like a like it's a it's a fine art. Yeah. They take the finest quality of fish. They they really fillet it down. They pack it with these incredible oils and flavorings. And when you you can have a whole lunch just by ripping open the top and popping a fork in there, and you've had this incredible meal. So what I do now is you know I'll take um, some whole grain whole wheat whole grain pasta. Um, I'll, I'll boil it up. I, I, I'm I'm trying to be. I'm actually writing my next book, so I'm trying to be really practical about this. I don't have a lot of time, but I like to make my own lunch uh, i'll take uh, some pasta a little bit I'll, I'll boil it up whole grain and then literally i will um put a little olive oil into a pan extra virgin olive oil i'll open up a tin i'll fork the meat in there and i'll break it up i'll throw a handful of capers in there squeeze some lemon throw some oregano just heat it up put it onto a bowl and man that's like a mediterranean meal from heaven yeah, so good. And you're getting your omega-3. So, but it's for you then, so again, we're going back to practical for our, our listeners, which would yeah. be, hey, I want to get on some sort of diet. You, the way, to your point, you, you read a book like a, An Eat to Beat Disease, which you've written, and you end up with a long, long list of things that you're going to find some things in there that you do lo a lot. And, and it's interesting. So practically, so is the first step is to explore well, look, I mean, here's what I, this is what I tell people to do. If you can get my book, um, take a Sharpie and literally flip to the tables of all the foods. Any food I listen there is good for you. And start um, circling the foods that you you like, okay? Um, and everybody's going to be circling something different. But I tell them, take out your cell phone and take a photograph of that page and then go shopping. And when you're when you're in the store, open your picture, your photos. And look at what you circled and start with those. Buy those and plan those for your meals because if you already, if you're starting with the foods that you already love that are good for you, um, then you're already ahead of the game. Like, you know, a lot of people are, 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 are stymied about healthy eating. They don't know where to begin. They're like, you know, I must have a terrible diet. I don't even know where I would start. And this is my, my tip. Start like, and it doesn't even have to be my book. Other people have also written books on healthy ingredients. Find circle doesn't go shopping. Pick up mm. the ones that you circled and uh, that you like. I like that because I get into a rut, and and I know that again. I think that uh, you know I love a, a salad with avocado, tomato, uh, and a couple other things with oil and white wine vinegar and salt pepper. To me, that is really wonderful almost every day of the week. But but then adding to that, I seem to get in a rut. And, and it's hard to go beyond uh, that same salad I've made a thousand times. And it's great, but I do kind of get sick of it. Especially if I'll have it three days in a row by third Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, by Thursday, I'm like, oh, I really just don't want another one of the same yeah. butter lettuce. Bit. So, uh, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be just be your book. It could be any book, but that, that, that talks about healthy foods, but let's go back to the five. So the androgenesis, the re uh, regenerating of your body, the micro bacteria in your gut and DNA and immune tell me about how food can activate those defenses. Hmm. Well, first of all, I have to tell the story of like, you know, so in my career, I, I was very interested for years looking at um, what are common denominators of disease, right? So if you think about cancer, heart disease, stroke, blindness, arthritis, they all seem like very different diseases. Billions of dollars are thrown by at researchers to do the kind of studies on them. And so you wind up having these discoveries that are an inch wide and a mile deep. Mm -hmm. And, you know, where's the cures? Where's the treatments? And so what I set out to do 30 years ago is to say, rather than look at what makes diseases different from one another, let's take a look at, let's turn, let's upend that entire approach and see what makes diseases the same. Uh, one of my mentors once said, if you drain the Pacific Ocean, you'll see how all the islands connect. All right. And that's what I was interested in is, sort of like all the interconnections between the, the, the diseases. And I looked at angiogenesis, how the body grows blood vessels as one of those common denominators because angiogenesis, um, which is all about blood vessels, uh, 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 is profoundly important for defending our health. 
We've got 60,000 miles worth of blood vessels packed inside our bodies. These are the highways and byways of health because they deliver the oxygen that we breathe and the nutrients that we eat to every single cell in our body. And so when our body is able and, to- And let me just interject to make sure our audience caught that. So it, again, your point here is androgenesis is the, is the growth or repair of our blood vessels that are so important to and vital to the body. Is that correct? And maintenance, yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. So, um, I mean, think about androgenesis um, really as the, um, the highway in the street system of our country. Okay. Um, you got to maintain those highways. You've got the six lane highways, and then you've got the small one way roads. All of those um, are what allows us to get from one place to the other. Yeah. And Without them, we end up like the, we're on the Oregon Trail and only half the people even make it. Exactly. Yeah. Precisely. And, and so uh, when we inspire and we breathe in air, the reason that that oxygen that we just inhaled gets to um, uh, uh, bring vital uh, uh, oxygen to our toe is because the blood vessels actually help the oxygen get there. Similarly, the food that we eat, that gets all the nutrients get absorbed in our stomach, they're distributed, the nutrients are distributed to our organs all by these blood vessels, these highways and bios. You got to think about 60,000 miles, how extensive that is. 60, 000, so we have 60,000 miles of, Worth of blood vessels in our bodies. In your body. And if you were to pull them out, all the blood vessels and line them up end to end, you'd form a thread that would wrap around the earth twice. Huge. It's one of the most exhaustive, <laughs> extensive organ systems in the body. One person, by the way. One person. That's right. And so you might imagine that when this defense system is perturbed, you don't have enough blood vessels. Now your organs not getting fed. Now your organs are mm -hmm. going to start dying, like in, after a heart attack or after a stroke or an erectile dysfunction. Okay, those are all examples of where angiogenesis is insufficient. On the mm -hmm. other hand, if you have too many blood vessels, more than you need, okay, that's like just like building extra bridges and extra roads and overlaying. You know, it's a mess. Those, mm -hmm. those extra blood vessels can feed diseases like cancers. You don't want to feed a cancer. You want to starve a cancer. You want prevent, mm -hmm. You don't want cancers to get access to oxygen, nor do you want it to get access to um, the nutrients. You want to cut off the blood, su uh, blood supply to cancer. Your body can actually do that as well. But there are diseases like cancer, but also blindness due to aging. So the most common cause of vision loss in people of retirement age is age-related macular degeneration. And, and, and the reason that people lose their vision, and I've worked on this for the last 20 years, is because abnormal blood vessels grow in the back of the eye, shouldn't be there, they leak, the leaking fluid and blood actually destroy your vision. Your mm. eye has to be crystal clear, but when they're mm. growing. And so biotechnology, which I've worked on, has been able to uh, uh, prevent those bad blood vessels from growing in the eye, also been able to starve cancers by cutting off their blood supply. And what I did is I, because I've been involved with the research for all this, I said, well, what happens when we throw food into those same development systems? What does green tea do? What does garlic do? What does, what do scallions do? What does um, uh, figs, what do figs do? And when I started to throw food- oh, By the way, I love figs so much. I just oh, yeah. discovered them. Someone gave me figs for my birthday, dried mm -hmm. figs. I hadn't had one for, I don't know, 20 years. And whoa. Love them. But anyway, keep going. Sorry. Yeah. Well, so <laughs> what, you know, what I did is I studied um, the foods in the same systems for drug development. And I also threw drugs in too. So literally you could, you can compare them head to head. And what was astounding to me was that in many cases, foods have the same potency as medicines in these experimental systems. And in some cases they are actually even better than the medicines. And so if I had disguised the name of the food, and gave it a funky drug company name, BFX1300. Uh, you know, like, and you were an investor, you go crazy. Like, I want to invest in that one. I want some Magloxa generative. Gener <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So the, 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 the amazing thing is that, you know, truly we're beginning to take a scientific approach to un unlocking the, the potential for food. And it's not just in the laboratory, but we're able to study it in the clinic as well. And that's what really allows people to understand how do we starve cancers by eating foods that help to cut off our blood supply, prevent extra angiogenesis? How do we eat foods that can grow up blood vessels to help us 
um, uh, develop more nourishing blood vessels. And the amazing thing about the body is that with food anyway, you cannot cause more blood vessels than you need, nor ah, can you starve. I was just going to ask that. Okay. It's the okay. Goldilocks zone, we call it. It's not too hot, not too cold, not too hard, not too soft. Your body's health defenses know how to work in a, within a band of perfect function. It can be a little higher, a little bit lower, but our body lawn mows any extra blood vessels and it'll throw grass seed on to grow where there's bald patches. But it, but it will do so best if it is nourished with the food food that that's right. that will and again you said that you again let's say you're 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 eating a food that's good at angiogenesis meaning it helps grow yeah or is angiogenesis both it's 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 essentially keeping the Goldilocks zone yeah it's keeping the Goldilocks zone oh, it's, it's all key, about again, the I was zone. thinking that it was one would be really good at growing and one would good at, at shaving but you're saying it it helps keep a tight band on the right amount of blood vessels exactly got it so so you can't eat you can't overeat these foods well you can't eat that you cannot use these foods to achieve overage got where okay. you would actually threaten your own health can you give a couple examples of good androgenesis type foods? Yeah, great. You want to grow blood vessels? I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, uh, apples, uh, dried fruit with fruit peel. There's a natural chemical called ursolic acid that's found in the peel of apples and apricots. And um, uh, that fruit peel uh, actually uh, stimulates blood vessels to grow naturally. Um, uh, like in the bald spots, it's kind of like the, 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 the grass seed to kind of, um, help fill out your line. Now you want to starve. Um, uh, you want to prevent the blood vessels from growing on the other side. The, um, uh, a good one would be, um, uh, uh pomegranate. Pomegranate mm. juice contains a natural chemical called elagitanin. The elagitanins actually are anti-angiogenic. And so actually if the Vessels try to grow too far up. It's kind of like a weed's growing too high up in a golf course. Guess what? Uh, uh, your body would naturally mow it down, but if your body needs a little help, the elagitanins will, will also help to mow, mow your help your body mow it down. Hold on. Okay, so wait, hold on. So let me go. Maybe I didn't understand it. So, so some of these foods are pro growth. Yep. Some are pro trimming the growth. But what if you, what if you accidentally ate? all pomegranates and, ne and no dried apples as yep. an example you're, you're you can never using food you can never go below that zone got it okay okay so you could yeah. you don't have to worry about which ones so much are pro versus non but either way they're androgenic in general they're all good exactly Precisely. so i can eat dried fruit and pomegranate or one of the same yeah what's another? Oh. give me one more example i love all that i love these food examples love uh these. um Walnuts, okay. Mm. Uh, walnuts are a good source of uh, healthy uh, fats, uh, plant-based omega-3s, and they're an amazing source of dietary fiber. Dietary fiber, when we eat them, uh, uh, we when we eat a walnut uh, or any tree nut, frankly, macadamia, cashew, pecan, pistachio, almond, when we when we eat it, our our body, the human body, will absorb the nutrients in your stomach and, and upper part of our gut. And then everything else goes to the lower part of the gut. And we used to be taught in medical school that all that fiber, like you have dietary fiber, it kind of irritates your colon. So you stay regular and that way you're not constipated. That's totally the wrong idea now. Like we've hmm. completely changed our mind. That dietary fiber is actually feeding our gut microbiome. So think about all this healthy gut bacteria. Look, we've got 40 trillion. We are, you and I are made of 40 trillion human cells. But inside our gut is another 39 trillion bacteria. All right. So we're one to one, one part to one, one part human, one to one part bacteria. And a lot of the, <laughs> most of that bacteria live in our gut. When we feed, when we eat something, we eat first, uh, the human part of us eats first. The rest of it goes down to feed our gut bacteria. And that's what's so profound. We give our gut bacteria room and board. We let them live in our gut. We feed them. Uh, the foods that we eat. And by the way, this is why it's also important what the foods that we, we're eating. If we eat something crappy, junk, okay, um, uh, overloaded with sugar, overloaded with preservatives, um, ultra processed foods, not only are we not getting the human part of us not getting the most we can out of that opportunity of eating, but we're also dumping 
junk food to our gut bacteria. Now, our gut bacteria uh, uh, is responsible for lowering inflammation, helping our metabolism, uh, even text messaging our brain and telling our brain to release social hormones. So when we screw up our gut bacteria by eating foods that disrupt it, think about like putting toxin in the uh, on the Great Barrier Reef. You're destroying that ecosystem. It's, the whole area is not going to be very happy. Not only is your tummy not going to feel good, your brain's not going to feel good. Your metabolism is not going to feel good. But tree nuts- So if I eat a bag of Schneider's pretzels and a Papa John's uh, cheese stuffed pizza with lots of sodium and carbs and sugar and all those things, that's just like wreaking havoc on the gut. I would say of the type of meal that you would be having a lot, you know, the, t- the, the way you, the type of things you'd be having with that, the most harmful things would be the soda, whether it's a regular soda or diet soda, um, that extra, you know, like a typical can of soda, which is very common. People have 10 teaspoons of refined sugar in each cup. All right. That's way too much for the body. And that overwhelms you. And it's actually kind of it's kind of toxic for your gut microbiome. Um, dietary soda, diet soda with artificial sweeteners. You don't want those ca- calories. Guess what? You just dumped a whole bunch of chemicals on your gut bacteria. They really don't like that. And that changes the makeup of your gut bacteria. So ironically, so it really is bad for you. you mean, diet, diet like Diet Coke. Terrible for you. You know, like I, I'm, I'm not talking about brands. I'm just saying that any form of these diet soda sweeteners are just really not great. Um, uh, but the tree nuts, when you feed, the, when you eat a walnut and that dietary fiber feeds the gut bacteria, they're thanking you. They're releasing these things called short chain fatty acids that lower the inflammation in your body. Your gut bacteria communicates to your immune system as well. Not only do they text message your brain, they also talk to your immune system to say, go after cancer cells, go protect us from bacteria and viruses. And, uh, Gosh, and- I am literally throwing out every Diet Coke that I have in my house. I had, I was so good for like five years on no diet soda. And now I've got, a, I've got, a, what about, uh, what about sparkling water? All the sparkling waters out there now, are they okay? You know, um, there's nothing inherently wrong with the carbonation. That's the mm-hmm. sparkling part. And then the flavoring, you know, what I would recommend that you do is to just look at the ingredients to make sure they're. So if there's not a lot of flavoring. You're you're okay. Mallory's like just over here, just crazy worried that she can't drink her Lacroix. <laughs> look, just you know, whatever it is you're drinking, just make sure it doesn't have a ton of added sugar. It, okay. it and as natural a product as possible. Carbonation for you know spritzer type of things, they're they're fine. Totally. Your Lacroix um, is fine. Mallory, yeah, you're good. Uh, but I'll tell you, a study of uh, walnuts was amazing. There was a, a study done by over a dozen major cancer research centers looking at 800 patients with stage three colon cancer. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's pretty advanced. They were getting surgery, radiation, chemotherapy, all the rest of the stuff. And then they followed them for a number of years to figure out like who did better. And it turns out that those people who ate two handfuls of tree nuts like walnuts actually had a 50% decrease in mortality. Wow. So, so wow. tree nuts, so a walnut, macadamia nut, all, all those nuts, uh, very, very healthy. Yeah, because the fibers talking to your microbiome, feeding your gut bacteria, who are then paying you back for by, by, by expressing their gratitude, by releasing anti inflammatory substances, better immunity. And also making you emotionally healthier as well. Um, well, hold on, emotionally healthier. Yeah, because your why gut are we? What is that? Because your our gut bacteria will text message our brain when they're healthy to release social hormones. What's Everything, a social hormone? What does like, that mean? Like serotonin, like you know the things that you, people take Prozac for. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they're they're trying to they're trying to restore the chemical balance in your brain. Your gut can actually do that, kind of like as a natural antidepressant. Um, and so that's why gut health is, you know, poor gut health is associated with depression and schizophrenia and uh, ADHD and a number of other kind of challenging mental health disorders. So what we're beginning to realize is that as we dig deeper and deeper and deeper into our gut health, just how profound um, uh, this health defense system of our gut microbiome could be. Let me tell you an upside. Um, research done at MIT with a colleague of mine. Um, Susan Erdman, 
showed that one one of the important gut bacteria is a lactobacillus um, ruteri, uh, and it's commonly found in yogurt, and uh, it's the bacteria that's used as a starter for sourdough bread. Um, real Parmigiano Reggiano cheese is actually made with lactobacillus ruteri, so it's a, it's a food substance, and it used to be very common in the human gut up until the 1940s when antibiotics were invented. And now some people have it, some people don't, okay? Oh. So, but I'll tell you what lactobacillus ruteri does. Not only does it actually help our immune system, not only does it actually help our metabolism, but this bacteria has been studied. It actually uh, taps our brain to release the ho social hormone oxytocin. You ever hear of oxytocin? It sounds like a good one. Oxytocin is a good hormone. It is the hormone your brain releases when you see a friend, your best friend you haven't seen in a while, and like you feel good. Like that's the that's what's coming out of your brain when you have a kiss. That's oxytocin. That feel good of of a kiss is oxytocin. When you have an orgasm, your brain pumps out for a few seconds a ton of oxytocin. Now you can imagine what happens. If Lactobacillus ruteri. Lactobacillus ruteri. Yeah. R E U T E R I. Amazingly, it's actually the bacteria. It's it, you know it's naturally found in the human gut, but it's actually the bacteria that is actually used to create the tangy flavor of sourdough bread. Oh, cool, cool. So sourdough bread isn't bad for you if you're in moderation because of the yeah, carbohydrates. Okay. But but the but the fact is that it's got something extra. It's actually got this tangy bacteria, the Lactobacillus ruteri, that can do all these other things. It contributes to your gut bacteria. Lactobacillus ruteri. It's in yogurt, sour bread, sourdough bread, Parmesan cheese, Parmesan cheese. Not, not the any Italians. Have, the Italians have it right. Throw Parmesan on everything, right? <laughs> well, um, and, it, and it's the one. It's the real Parmigiano Reggiano, which is different than the kind of like the mass produced. Uh, Parmesan that you can find, you know, in most places. Okay. So let's go to, so we have androgenesis and then all the, you kind of have these, uh, well, you have androgenesis, then you have the other, these other four regeneration. We talked mm -hmm. a little bit about gut DNA and then immune system. Let's go through the, the others on, yeah. on the impact of food on these other areas. Yeah. So let's talk about regeneration. So uh, when I was a kid, um, probably you as well, you know, my kindergarten teacher told me that Starfish regenerate, uh, salamanders can regenerate, and unfortunately, humans don't regenerate, right? So, but that yeah. that chapter is now being torn out of the textbook and thrown away and rewritten. The new chapter says humans, in fact, do regenerate. We regenerate slowly. Uh, we can't grow a new arm or leg, but you know, our liver regenerates, our lungs regenerate, our gut regenerates, and our immune system regenerates for sure. And so, how do we regenerate? How do we heal ourselves from the inside out? This is all, by the way, invisible repair. You don't even know that your liver needs to be replaced or you know, uh, part of your lung needs to grow. Your body knows how to do that uh, for you. And uh, the, the, the way we regenerate um, goes to stem cells. Now, you probably know you can go to a strip mall someplace and find somebody that can inject some stem cells into your knee or your ankle or your elbow right, for, for joints. Like those, those, those kind of clinics are everywhere. Well, I've been involved with the, the kind of the real hardcore biotech stem cell therapy. And here's what I can tell you. We're not ready for prime time yet. It's very promising for the future. We got so much more to do to be able to perfect it as a medical treatment. However, Mother Nature's beat us to it because we already have stem cells in our body and foods can make our stem cells come out and, and speed up the repair. So where do we get our stem cells? We get our stem cells from... Um, from the womb. So while we were developing, when mom's egg met dad's sperm, and we were just a couple of balls of cells growing for nine months, okay? Mm -hmm. um, at the same time that our chin formed, our ears formed, our pancreas formed, our heart, our nerves formed, okay, our bladders formed, so too um, uh, were all these stem cells that were feeding the process of sculpting our body. Now, when we were born, Pretty much the stem cells did all their had already done all their job, but we had overage. It's kind of like painting a room. Like you know, you're gonna buy a couple of extra cans of paint. You know, last thing you want to do is run out of paint before you're finished, right? So you're done with the paint, and what do you do? That you got a couple of extra cans, 
you put the cap back on and stick it in the garage. And that's basically what happens when we're born. We're fully formed. We have some overage of our stem cells because we didn't want to run out. And those extra stem cells, of which there are 70 million of them, are packed into our bone marrow. And those extra stem cells wind up being reserves for us so that as we go through our life, if we actually need some regeneration, we just call out the stem cells. So what are the foods that can actually do that? Turns out that dark chocolate is actually one of the foods that's been studied in humans that can call out your stem cells. So one research study took people in their 60s, men in their 60s, retirement age, okay, who actually had heart disease and they had poor blood flow. And they um, gave them two, the equivalent of two cups of hot chocolate made with dark chocolate. Think 80% or higher cacao, right? You know, you look at how many, how many percent cacao, 80% or higher, that's really dark. Now, cacao is a plant-based food. Cacao is not, doesn't come in a wrapper, like in the shape of a kiss, a Hershey's kiss. Cacao comes from this big pod. It's like a football size thing. It's plant, made of a plant. It's got dietary fiber. It's got natural bioactives, got polyphenols in it. And um, uh, one of those, uh, proanthocyanidin, calls out the stem cells from our bone marrow. So when you drink hot chocolate, more, bone, more stem cells come out to, to, throughout our body, and the stem cells only repair the areas that need to be repaired. So this study that looked at these 60 men, I mean, the, the men in their 60s, gave them either a placebo or they gave them um, uh, chocolate, dark hot, chocolate, dark chocolate, hot chocolate, dark chocolate twice a day. And they found over the course of a month, they could double the number of stem cells in their bloodstream. Okay. And they could improve their circulation by almost double as well. The resiliency, the agility of their blood flow was also improved. And think about that. If uh, the, the ability to be able to improve your circulation, you know, as we are in that third chapter of life is amazing gives you more energy your brain's got better blood flow you got better cognition you know um uh the the other bits and parts that you want good blood flow better regeneration as well and so huge implications of this regenerative system um that foods can actually um uh, stimulate barley is another uh food that can actually stimulate stem cells uh as well now but, but we need to do that with the exclusion of of sugar how how if you had to el eliminate, I know you like to add, but if you had to eliminate a couple really toxic things, what would what would they be, Doctor? You know, uh, you know, I got to go with the the things that are just um, overtly, essentially toxic. One is alcohol. You know, mm -hmm. even though people drink, I mean, even though it's a social tradition for humans to have a wine or a beer, uh, all the good stuff, and, and they've had, even been shown to have health benefits. All the good stuff, all the benefits come from the stuff inside the, the liquid, not from the alcohol itself. The ethanol that's actually in wine or beer is actually a toxic, it poisons your organs, your, kills brain cells, kills liver cells. Your body has to fix itself every time you have a drink, okay? Mm, and fortunately, wow. we can regenerate, as I told you. Um, yeah. But that's, that's a toxin that not everybody needs to have. Number two, I would say, you know, um, uh, the, the, a little bit of sugar is fine. Um, a lot of added sugar, that is something you should really try to cut down or cut out. I'm telling you, those 10 teaspoons of sugar in a soda, think about it. If I gave you an empty glass and I gave you a teaspoon and just in a, in a sugar bowl, and I said, go ahead and put 10 in a glass, okay? You want to actually, and I said, now, now, now eat it, all right? That's you what never do it. Is, right? gross. Yeah. yeah. Right? So basically, that's something that overwhelms. A little bit of sugar from a, an incredible juicy summer peach, something I crave really sweet like that's not going to hurt you and because your body is getting a little sh a little hit of it but you're also getting all these other bioactives and dietary hey, how about a uh, how about a how about a sumo orange have you ever had a sumo orange? love those are they not so great they they're, look ugly but they you know what they, you know what i what i love about them is th they're pretty intimidating looking right yeah and they're kind of gnarly almost in their, their texture but all you do is you just grab it and you just pull on it and the whole thing comes up. Rip off the skin. The sumo orange is amazing. And by the way, I'm such a huge fan of the next gen apples and, and hopefully they're still good for us. But the combination of the 
of the I think it's the Honey Crisp in the Empire to make the Pink Lady or the Pink Crisp. I know it's like a designer apple, but some of those apples have gotten so good. Uh, I did a, a bunch of, I don't know, I, I had this fascination phase with apples at one point in my life and, uh, and, and have discovered a couple of apples that I love. And um, I don't know, I guess you're saying the skin of apples is really, really good for androgenesis, well, correct? And, and, the, and the flesh of the apple is good for anti-androgenesis, for, for, for so starving cancer. Eat the whole apple. Yeah. Right. So hold on. Alcohol, sugar, one more thing to avoid. What about red meat? Am I allowed to eat steak? You know what? Okay. So this is, um, you know, there's so much when it comes to nutrition and food and health that almost becomes a religion, right? So mm. I'm, I'm a scientist and I'm a doctor and I'm working on food as medicine. I'm all about the science. I'm all about the evidence. And of course, you know, people listening to this, you, you can tell that I actually really enjoy food. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of a foodie. And so I, to me, food is also, food as medicine does something that medicine can't do, which is bring you joy, all right? Um, and so I don't take the sides of like, you know, you got to be vegan, you know, if you're a good person. And if you eat meat, you're a bad person. <laughs> like, it's almost like that way, at how it's discussed. I'll say, look, life is for the living. And I used to tell this to my patients all the time. You, you got to make it worth your while. Um, what I encourage you to do is to spend most of your time eating stuff that's good for you. And every now and then, if there's just something that you really love that you want to treat yourself to, go ahead and knock yourself out. Like if you're going to, I, I don't think that you should be eating red meat all the time, but I don't think that's one of those toxic materials you got to cut out of your life. Oh, okay. Now, okay. I think, I think, you know, you want to, by the way, if you're going to actually eat, if you enjoy meat, not everybody enjoys meat, but if you enjoy meat and meat does have iron and other minerals and vitamins that you can't get very easily from other uh, foods, so I just say that like, but you got to like it. And I'm saying, if you're going to get meat, get the best, most enjoyable cut of meat. Don't get too much of it. Don't eat it too often, but really knock yourself out by with enjoyment, like really savor what you're actually yeah. doing. Like you a know, six the, ounce filet. Why not? Once a you know, week. And like, and what I'm saying is Once that a month. Know, this whole idea of in, inventing things that are ultra processed foods that that look like meat and maybe taste like meat, but oh yeah, beyond meat. burger meat, yeah, all that. Crap. I'm, I'm just not into that, and I, I just yeah. sort of think um, that's an ultra processed food, by the way. Uh, you're, it's what is made of soybeans? Is that correct? It's, it's like ultra processed extruded stuff that doesn't look like the whole food. You know, it's not made. It's not made for the whole food. They mix all kinds of stuff together. In fact, some of that stuff is gene genetically modified, so it can bleed. The meat can bleed. Um, so. I'm just telling you, like, I think we need to go, we need to be as simple as possible. The f old food cultures, you know, the things that have been handed down for hundreds or thousands of years, you know, didn't stick around that long without reason. And so that's why mostly eating whole foods that are mostly plant-based, um, uh, nuts and seeds, healthy oils, seafood is actually really good for you. Seafood um, is. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. seafood is, you could eat if, if. You don't want to eat a, a a steak every day, but you would be fine to eat some sort of seafood. What what is kind of a staple seafood you would you, that you like? Besides, well, you you've already said you like kind of fish in tin, like a, like a tuna. What's good in fish? Well, it's not. It's also it's a good source of protein, but it's also a good source of these marine omega three fatty acids that ultimately, by the way, come from algae. So at the end of the day, the good stuff still comes from a plant. Um, but the fish ate it. When you eat fish, there's <laughs> so many fish that actually have omega threes, and even shellfish as well. Manila clams have more omega threes than salmon does, actually. Mm. And and so you know, so again, like you know, uh, em embody you know, kind of bring out the inner foodie and 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 explore these different foods and to get get, get your um, omega threes. Everybody says salmon, and I'm, I tell people halibut, hake. All these other fish have also sea bass, Mediterranean sea bass. They all have a lot of omega threes. Um, clams, mussels have omega threes. You know, if you like shellfish, lobster has some omega threes. So you don't have to only be a robot and eat salmon all the time. If you, you eat salmon, by the way, something a lot of people don't know is that the healthy omega threes, most of it in a salmon is in the skin. So don't be throwing away that skin. That's all the good stuff. So then you got to prepare it in a way where you're going to eat the skin like make it nice and crisp 
mm-hmm. so that, you know, like the skin tastes. If that's done right, by the way, in a good Mediterranean or Persian restaurant, the skin of a salmon is just, it's so good. It, it, is, it is the best part, but it's yeah. not everywhere that you find it done well enough to do that. Precisely. Yeah. Precisely. I can tell you're some, I can tell you're somebody who appreciates, uh, you appreciate food. Yeah, I really do. I mean, a guy. Yeah, I feel like every human does. But I, I get made fun of in my family as the as the non foodie, only because because I've got a couple of siblings that all love to cook, and I, I actually do too. Ironically, I secretly probably cook almost as much as they do, or like it just as much as they do. But I think that that I get chided a little bit because I also like any non fancy food. Like I love. I would be totally fine with a hot dog and mustard and relish. I know that's terrible, but th- that for some reason cancels me out of the family foodie camp. Well, tell them about tell them about the uh, the the pasta with the tin fish. That's a that's an ultra simple. It sounds lowbrow, but as you know from Spain, if you get, yep, the I lived right in southern Spain. I lived in Sevilla yeah, for a long I mean, time. Like yeah. that's a that's a delicacy. Yeah, I love it. All right, so let's go to. Kind of our gut, our DNA, and then I know this all kicks into the immune system. Yeah, well, so um, uh, gut microbiome we talked a little bit about already. You know, eating foods with high dietary fiber. What, what kinds of foods are they? Right. Mushrooms have a lot of dietary fiber. It's called a the fiber is called prebiotic because it's before the bacteria. You're feeding the bacteria. Bok choy is a good source of of dietary fiber. Tree nuts are a great source of dietary fiber. Kiwi is a great source of dietary fiber. You know, I just I just kind of ran the gamut right now of the of the produce section um, yeah. of the grocery store, so you can find all kinds of things with great dietary fiber. Probiotic foods are also good for the gut microbiome because now you're introducing healthy bacteria. You're eating it. Kimchi, sauerkraut, yogurt. You know, uh, you like anything else. You want to make sure you understand the provenance of where your food's coming from and what's been added into the food. You don't want to. A lot of stuff that's been doctored up, right. um, and that's that's I would say you know for your for your audience, whatever you're getting, you know make sure you know where it's coming from and ask that you should ask that question and also if it comes in a box or a can um, or a bottle, lift it up and take a look at those ingredients. You want to read it and if there's something that doesn't make sense to you or something you can't understand why it's there, probably not a good idea. Probably not a great idea. How about our DNA? I mean, that to me feels like, well, it does, isn't the DNA just the DNA? What, what can you do right. with that? Well, so here's the thing. Our, our DNA is well known now to be our genetic code. They mix proteins in our body, which keeps us alive. Um, uh, uh, and I'll give you some interesting stats. Uh, so remember I told you, you you've got 43, uh, 40 trillion cells in your body. Well, each cell, if I were to take one of the cells out and put it under a microscope, and I would take a tiny little dissecting knife and open up your cell and wanted to get your DNA with a pair of forceps, I could pull out a six foot strand of DNA in, in one every, cell, in one cell. Okay. It's all packed in there. Okay. Now guess what? The part that's our genetic code to actually make proteins the way that we think about it only occupies 2% of that six foot. Okay. The rest of it is all instructions for coordinating things in your body, uh, actions in your body, chemical reactions in your body, and protecting the body from harmful forces. Now, why, what, why do you say protection? When our DNA is injured or um, uh, altered in a negative way, that's called a mutation. Everyone knows that cancers are caused by mutations in their DNA. So one of the things that our body desperately is hardwired to do is prevent um, these mutations from actually happening. Now, it's hard to prevent a mistake from happening, a mutation. It's much easier to fix that mutation. Oh, okay. okay. So our DNA's protection as a health defense is to fix those mistakes. How many mistakes do you think your body makes uh, or a typical person, human's body makes every single day in terms of their DNA? Yeah, that's that's what I'm wondering now. That if we've got 40 million cells, I guess it happens more than we think. That's right. It's not, because it's not like once or twice a day. It's like no. Probably, what the is answer it? is that 10,000 mistakes are made in an average person every single day. Whoa. And no, okay. And again, if 900, if 9,999 of them get corrected, but one doesn't, that's what leads to a cancer. A microscopic cancer, correct. And yeah. so that's why eating foods that can help our DNA protect itself 
uh, is really important. Now, where do those 10,000 mistakes come from? Well, some of it comes from just the copy paste mechanism of 40 trillion cells. It's really hard to do that perfectly. But think about the other forces that we go through our life where, that, where we can actually damage our DNA. Look, um, you know, going to a sun tanning uh, 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 clinic, not good for you. You're laying tanning. You know, yeah. burning on the beach can mutate your DNA. But you know, it's ultraviolet radiation. And so is sitting in traffic with your window down and the sun shining on your forearm also causing damage to your DNA. So how come you don't get arm skin cancer in your arm, you know, after sitting in traffic for your career? Because your, your body's DNA the protection is fixing it. Here's another one. What about like you're, you know, putting uh, at the filling station, filling up your car with gas? I always ask people, do you stand upwind or downwind? And people look at me like, uh, I don't know. Why do you even ask? If you are smelling the fumes, the gas, you are downwind and you are inhaling these solvents into your lung that's causing mutations in your DNA in your lung. Mm. So how come you don't get lung cancer from going to fill up your car with gas? Because your DNA is fixing itself. Fixing Here's it, another yeah. one, radon. Just a basement. Radiation coming up from Mother Earth is also frying our DNA from the soles of our feet upwards. How come we don't develop foot cancer? Because our DNA is fixing itself. So now obviously, it's to our own advantage to tip the odds in our favor of not having those mistakes, helping our body fix those. So what are some of the foods that can actually help fix our DNA? Well, citrus foods that actually contain vitamin C, which is an antioxidant, can help our DNA prevent from being damaged. So what are some of the foods? Strawberries, um, besides uh, sumo oranges, as you're talking about, uh, <laughs> lemons and limes, uh, guava, papaya, tomatoes, uh, uh, all great sources of uh, vitamin C, um, red bell peppers. Um, uh, what are some other great sources of um, DNA protection? Turns out the kiwi is a good one, one of my favorites. So research studies have been done showing eating one kiwi uh, a day and checking your, DNA, your bloodstream an hour later um, is enough to actually protect the DNA damage by 60%. I'm going to get a kiwi. I've never been able to wrangle the kiwi but i'm gonna try it now i just have never bought a kiwi ever because i just you know don't what? love and, and and if you're not really uh into eating peeling the hairy skin off and then cutting up that green fruit do that and just throw it into a into um a blender for making a smoothie oh mm -hmm. just yeah, so you almost don't even yeah then at it's... least you get the kiwi you at least you get well and it's, a... got, it's got a lot of fiber in it as well Fiber for the gut, kiwi for the DNA repair. The, yeah, exactly. It's got the other stuff, bioactives for, for protecting your DNA. And then lastly, immune. Are, are there are there immune boosting foods? I suspect there are. Or... Yeah. Well, okay. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, especially in the last couple of years, people have been really digging deep to see, say, what kind of foods can be helpful for our immune system? I'll tell you, first of all, you got to understand a little bit about how complicated the immune system is. Our immune system is like an army of super soldiers, different types of immune cells. And each of these immune types, each immune cell has their own special weapons that they can use to fight invaders. Invaders from the outside of the body are bacteria and viruses, for example. Invaders from the inside of the body are these microscopic cancer cells we talked about. And so our immune cells um, patrol looking for problems to make sure everything is like peaceful and we've got good security. Um, foods that can actually help um, uh, uh, boost our immune system are blueberries, for example, can up our T cells. Uh, uh, um, we also know that uh, uh, we also know that um, uh, broccoli and broccoli sprouts can help elevate our immune system. Here's an, a, a, quite an amazing research study that was done out of the University of North Carolina. They studied bunch of young people in their 20s who were getting the flu vaccine. So ordinary, it's fall, get a good flu vaccine. Mm -hmm. And they divided them in half and half of them they gave a placebo and the other half they gave a shake made with broccoli sprouts. Okay. Yeah. Broccoli sprouts are three to four day old baby broccolis, kind of nutty flavor. Um, you can season, flavor them with other things. And what they found is then they measured their blood and they found that, you know, of course, everybody's immune system uh, reacted uh, positively to getting the flu vaccine, but the people who had the flu vaccine 
and the broccoli sprout shake, okay, had a 22 times increase in their immune response. So they became supercharged. Their immune system became supercharged um, just with this shake. Wow. Talk about it. I mean, that's a very powerful. So broccoli, broccoli sprouts, really powerful for the immune system. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So food really is, I mean, is there a world where if you, if you were to take away the pharmaceutical world and start over and make food just as profitable as pharmaceuticals? Is there a world where that could be, you had mentioned earlier that in a lot of cases, food is, is as powerful as, the, as the, a drug that's FDA approved. It, could, that, could that actually be part of a world that we live in if we were to be able to restart? Or is, it, or is there a massive, is a real place for, obviously for both? And I think that would be the answer, but is there just a, not enough in- emphasis on food? Yeah, I mean, listen, I mean, I think that, that we are, heading to an inflection point where more and more people are realizing that when it comes to human health, we cannot only rely on pharmaceuticals. We need to rely on the other pharmaceuticals that isn't spelled with a PH, but spelled with an F, the farm. The right F. The right F, exactly. And the the idea is that rather than sort of um, uh, rely on the industrialized prepackaged you know, inexpensive, quick heat and serve kind of food that there's a, a new type of awareness, knowledge, um, mm-hmm. and interest in pursuing um, the foods that are going to be best for us, make better choices. And I think that that's really where we're going to be more attentive to, all right, tomatoes have lycopene, which can lower the risk of prostate cancer. Um, which tomatoes have the most like uh, lycopene? Um, I can tell you the answer is a San Marzano tomato from Italy. Um, uh, 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 instead of using butter or canola oil, we should use extra virgin olive oil. Okay, well, there's a lot of different types of olive oils. What's the best, most healthful type of olive oil? Well, what's an olive oil? Hydroxytyrosol, one of the bioactives. So which olives have the most hydroxytyrosol? Well, if you look at a Greek olive oil, it's the oils made with Koroneki olives as a monovarietal in the olive oil. If you look at Italy, it's the Moraiolo olive from Umbria. And if you look at Spain, it's the Picuao olive. So now, you know, like that's, those are the best. They have the highest amount of polyphenols. So it's kind of like the Robert Parker, you know, the wine guy. Um, oh, yeah. Rating the wines and, you know, it gives a number. You're rating I, olive oil for, for, for health. Yeah. I, well, I think that this, it's not, and it's not just olive oil. I mean, I think that in the, coming future, we are going to want to find ways to create ratings and rankings of not just different types of foods. Like right now, like our conversation has a lot been a lot been a lot about identify the bad foods versus the good foods. All right. Mm-hmm. But you know, I think in the future we're going to be talking more about the good foods and say what's the best among the good mm, foods. Yeah. And that's a that's a higher level conversation that I'm looking forward to having. Well, this has been a high level conversation. Holy cow. I mean, I feel I, I, now at least I have. So, so I get, if I were to sum this up for our, the happy retiree, it is to first understand our conversation and the power of food, which a lot of us, can, we do, we've, we're getting better at understanding that and then exploring the world of food to be able to feel good about a variety of things that are really powerful for our bodies. And that is, it makes me excited. I cannot wait to go to my local fresh market and farmer's market and find the foods that are fun and also can help with the five things that we talked about today. So God, I'm so glad we had you. So glad I found you on the, on the interwebs. Well, you know, and and the thing is that this research is coming out faster and faster every week and every month. And so one of the things that I do um, uh, as a food as medicine researcher is I try to curate the parts, the, the studies that are actually most important. And, and, you know, I call it kind of like information that you can actually use. There's a lot of pretty sophisticated research that not ready for prime time or maybe interesting for just a bunch of chemists or biochemists or scientists, food scientists. But what, I, what I'm interested in are, is information about food that you can put to use every day. Like I told you, like we talked about the nuts and colon cancer. We talked about, um, you know, the, the dietary fiber that can actually be 
uh, transformative. Um, those are the kinds of things that people can use. And so I actually would encourage anybody who's interested um, that, that wants to follow the ongoing news that I pump out. Because when I see it, I'll take a look and see if it's something I think the audience should know. Um, and then, you know, uh, so people want to sign up for my newsletter, just come to my website. Uh, which is Dr. Dr. William Lee, L I dot com, Dr. William Lee dot com, or follow me on social. Uh, my handle is at Dr. William Lee. Um, I'm always on, on Instagram, out, on Instagram, on Instagram. Yep. Yep. Uh, I'm, I'm always putting out new information that's coming out. Well, you picked up at least one follower today. Well, thank uh, you. You picked up one big fan today and, uh, this is exactly what what we needed on the Retire Sooner podcast. We this was this has been a void, and I'm glad we. I'm, this is so I'm so excited that we we're able to find you, and this is so good, so much good information, and gives me hope that we can eat healthy. And I've I've seen the power of it. I've I've had some phases of life where I really was it was good about I, I was good about eating healthy, and it just is so awesome if if we can do it. I think your job is to to help make it easier for more people to be able to do that and not feel like it's restrictive. So thank you, Dr. Lee. Uh, thanks for being on uh, Retire Sooner today. My pleasure, Wes.